What's up everybody, Tim here at Full Spectrum Laser. A lot of our customers, or people looking to get into the laser industry in general, ask us what's the difference between raster and vector. Most of the time we'll give you a short and functional answer of, well, raster images engrave and vector images cut. And while that may give you enough to go on when using a laser, it doesn't really answer the question. So today, I'm going to go into a bit more detail on the differences between vector images and raster images. I'm also going to go over some ways to tell the difference between the two. So let's get started. So first off, most images you come across are going to be raster images. The term raster just describes the process TV screens and computer monitors take to display images, which is to say it simply displays points of color in a rectangular grid pattern. These points of color are called pixels. If you've ever zoomed way into a digital picture, you can actually see all the points of color that make up the image. This is how most digital pictures are laid out. As most of you know, when engraving an image, there is no color. The laser is only concerned with brightness, so when we bring a raster image into RE3, it's going to turn it black and white, and then it's going to look at every pixel and decide to either make it black or white, depending on its brightness. And by adjusting the threshold, you can change the brightness at which it makes this decision. So if we slide it this way, there are more pixels turn black. And if we slide it this way, there are more pixels turn white. Alternatively, if we use the halftone dither setting, it'll use a kind of pointillism and spread out clusters of black dots to give the impression of grays. This setting is ideal for photographs, while threshold is best for logos, text, and high contrast artwork. Now on to vector images. Unlike raster images, vector images don't use pixels. They're math and geometry based. So where raster images know the color and position of each pixel, vector images know the length, angles, position, curves, etc. of lines and shapes. If we go into Illustrator, which is Adobe's vector imaging software, and we draw a triangle, then we zoom in, there are no pixels. This is because vector software is aware of the shape in the image. If we do the same thing in Photoshop, Sure, we know this is a triangle, but as far as the software is concerned, it's just a series of pixels. In Illustrator, it knows that it's three lines at different angles. Because of this, vector images are infinitely scalable, which is super handy when working with lasers. Now here comes the tricky part. How can we tell the difference? Typically, you'd look at the file format. SVGs, EPSs, and DXFs are examples of vector files, while JPEGs, PNGs, and BMPs are examples of raster images. But some file formats, like .AIs or Illustrator files and PDF files, can contain both raster and vector data, making it tough to tell the difference without opening the file. For example, if we load a raster or pixel image into Illustrator and save it as a .AI file, it's still just raster data. Just because a .ai file supports vector doesn't automatically mean the image is now a vector. PDFs work the same way. They contain both types of images, so until you open the file, it can be really tough to tell. If you have a vector imaging program like Illustrator, you can open your file to check. I'm going to open two versions of the same image so we can go over what to look for to tell if it's a vector or not. Here's our two images. They're simple black and white full spectrum laser logos. Now I can tell right off the bat which one is a vector image. I can tell because there are lines and anchor points tracing the outline of the logo. See the blue outline? That's the giveaway. I can also use my direct selection tool and modify my anchor points. A raster image isn't modifiable in any way aside from scale and rotation. Now I can tell that this one here is a raster image. Notice we're missing the outlines and we're left with only a bounding box. That's because it's just a box of black and white pixels, arranged in such a way that it makes up our logo. Now there are ways to take a raster image like this and turn it into a vector image like this one, but until you do that, it'll still remain as pixel data. So just to show you really quick, the way to do that in Illustrator is to use the Image Trace tool. We just select our design and go to our Image Trace tab. If you don't have this, you can go up to Window and select it there. So it'll give you a few options, but for simple black and white designs, we actually have a preset. Now this can do high detail images, but once it's done tracing, it'll look drastically different. It'll take longer to trace, and the file will be very large. So I usually reserve the image trace for images or designs with only a few colors. Now that we have our preset selected, I'll typically go down to the advanced options and check the ignore white box. This will make sure that we're only left with the black parts. But before we do that, I'll show you what it looks like if we don't ignore white. 
so we'll turn off preview and trace it. Now there's one more thing we have to do, and that's expand. We just go to the Object tab and select Expand. Now you can see the little outlines, but you can also see the outline of the bounding box. That's not a huge deal. If we imported this into RE3, it would still work, but if we wanted to maybe put this on top of another design or something, that white box might be a problem. We could just grab our Direct Select tool and delete it, or you could just remove a step by checking that Ignore White Box from earlier. So let's do that. I hit Undo, so we're back to before we trace it, and this time we'll ignore white. And there you go, no bounding box. Now I'll show you what a raster image and vector image will look like when we bring them into RE3. I'll import each of them into their own layer. So here we have two different layers, one of them a vector image and the other a raster image. To see any difference, we'll have to hit these drop-downs. Now right off the bat, we can see a difference. The vector image has two sub-layers, while the raster only has one. That's because RE3 will automatically generate a rasterized version of your vector image, in case you want to engrave the image instead of cutting it. If you're curious as to why it doesn't do the same and vectorize your raster images, that's because that's a relatively difficult process that requires much more settings to be tweaked. Illustrator has the image trace tool for that, but RE3 doesn't. Now generally, when I import a vector file, it's because I want to cut something out. So I'll either delete the rasterized image or hide it. That'll keep it from engraving my vector lines before the cut. If I select my vector layer, you can see that we get cutting settings on the right. If we select a raster layer, we get engraving settings. We can also see that each of them have a different icon. This is your typical image icon, while this is lines and shapes indicating a vector layer. So if we want to engrave this image, we would run this layer and hide the other. If we wanted to cut this image out, we would do the opposite. Now you're ready to go. I hope this little guide helped you in differentiating your raster images from your vector images. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comments, or give us a shout on our Facebook page. And until next time, keep making.